The aim of Buddhism, to state it briefly, is to dispel the clouds of ignorance and to make shine the sun of enlightenment. We are selfish because we are ignorant as to the nature of self. We are addicted to the gratification of the passions because we are ignorant as to the destiny of humanity. We are quarrelsome and want to make ourselves powerful and predominant at the expense of our fellow beings because we are ignorant of the ultimate reason of the universe. Buddhists do not recognize any original sin, but acknowledge the existence of ignorance and insist on its total removal as the surest means of salvation. Let us, therefore, all be enlightened as to the statement made before. Let us know that we are all one in the reason of the universe that the phenomenal world is real only to the extent it manifests reason, that egoism has no absolute sway in this life, for it destroys itself when it tries to preserve itself through its arrogant assertion, and that perfect peace is only attained when I recognize myself in you and you in me. Let us all be enlightened as to these things, and our ignorance and egoism are forever departed. The wall that divides is destroyed, and there is nothing which prevents us from loving our enemies. And the source of divine love is open in our hearts. The eternal current of sympathy has now found its unobstructed path. This is the reason why Buddhism is called the religion of enlightenment. Now that we stand on this eminence of religious sanctity, we know what Buddhist practical faith is. It is threefold. One, to cease from wrongdoing. Two, to promote goodness. And three, to enlighten the ignorant. Buddhist ethics is the simplest thing to practice in the world. It has nothing mysterious, nothing superstitious, nothing idolatrous, nothing supernatural. Stop doing anything wrong, which is against the reason of things. Do whatever is good, which advances the course of reason in this life. And finally, help those who are still behind and weary of life to realize enlightenment. And here is Buddhism in a nutshell. It has nothing to do with prayer and worship and singing and what not. Our simple everyday life of love and sympathy is all that is needed to be a good Buddhist. I was once asked whether there was such a thing as religious life particularly, to which my answer was simple enough. Attend to your daily business, do all you can for the promotion of goodness in this world, and out of fullness of heart, help your fellow beings to gain the path of enlightenment. Outside of this, there cannot be anything to be specially called a religious life. In the latter part of the Tang Dynasty in China, there was a famous poet statesman who is known in Japanese as Hak Rak Ten. He learned that there resided in his district a Buddhist monk greatly noted for his saintly life and scholarly learning. The governor went to see him, intending to discuss some deeply religious topics. As soon as he was ushered into the presence of the monk, he inquired what was thought by the saint to be the most fundamental teaching of Buddhism. The monk immediately replied that it is the teaching of all enlightened ones to cease doing anything evil, to promote goodness, and to purify one's own heart. Hak Rak Ten was nonplussed to receive such a commonplace instruction from the mouth of such a scholarly personage professing the faith of Buddha. For he secretly expected to have something highly metaphysical and profoundly speculative, which would naturally lead them to further philosophizing and contentless abstraction. The poet-statesman therefore retorted, This is what every child of three summers is familiar with. I desire, on the other hand, what is most abstruse, most essential, most vital in Buddhism. The monk, however, coldly replied, 
Every child of three summers may know what I said now, but even a silvery-haired man of eighty winters finds it difficult to put the Buddhist instruction into the practice of everyday life. And it is said that thereupon the governor reverentially bowed and went home wiser. What is philosophical in Buddhism is no more than a preliminary step toward what is practical in it. Every religion, if it deserves the name, must be essentially practical and conducive to the promotion of the general welfare and to the realization of reason. Though intellectualism is one of the most characteristic features of Buddhism, making it so distinct from any other religious system, it never forgets the fact that our religious consciousness ever demands something concrete, that which is visible to our senses, that which is observable in our everyday life. Religion does not necessarily consist in talking on such subjects as the continuation after death of individual personality, original sin committed by some mythical personages, the last judgment to be given by an unknown quantity, a special historical revelation which takes place in a congested brain and what not. At least practical Buddhism does not trouble itself with solving these problems through speculation or imagination or sophistry. Let those theologians who delight in abstraction and supernaturalism discuss them to their heart's content, for that is their profession. We, plain, ordinary Buddhists, will keep on removing selfishness, seeking the light that is everywhere, practicing loving-kindness that does not contradict or discriminate. Says an ancient sage, The way is near, and thou seekest it afar. Why, then, shall we ever attempt to walk away from the path which extends right in front of us, so wide and well paved?